What's going on guys? Alex here with 814 EDC and today I'm ready to do my full review on the Kaiser Knives Dogfish. So this was one of three that came in via the Lefty Pass Around group. Uh, if you guys caught yesterday's video, I did my full review on the Kaiser K. Now I'm doing the Dogfish and then I have the Thai Sparrow to do as well. Um, and honestly, this was probably the one I was most excited for when the package came in. Uh, the excitement kind of transitioned over to the Sparrow, but nonetheless, this is still a very good knife. And uh, I was still, you know, very happy to carry it around. And I was very happy to, you know, get to experience it because I had seen a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube, you know, talking about this knife and the design just, you know, did things for me. And I really like the, the milling on the, the scale and all around, it, I was really excited for it. Um, and it did not let me down. I really enjoyed the knife. And I think it's going to be a pretty pretty positive review. Um, there are a few, you know, small little nitpicks, but nothing too big. And I think overall, again, it's going to be a pretty, you know, positive review. So um, jumping right into, you know, materials, the first category of my review scale. Um, I will say there is only one variation of this knife right now. I believe this came out in... December, or I think December is when the Dogfish came out. Uh, so it's a relatively new, you know, re release for Kaiser. And uh, like I said, there's only one different variation, or one different, one variation of the knife, which is the knife you see right here. Um, so jumping in the materials, we have these aluminum scales that have this beautiful radial milling. Uh, I've really become a sucker for radial milling over the last couple weeks, months, seems like relatively new thing for me. Uh, and I think what did it for me was seeing all the radio milling that um, Oz Machine Company was doing on their Roosevelt. I would see people posting it and I would see, you know, whether or not they were, uh, Oz was posting that for like their weekly drops or people that I follow on Instagram that have a Rosie was posting it. And I just became a really, really big fan of the way the radio milling goes out from the, the pivot, you know, through the scale. And I just think it looks really clean. It's kind of mesmerizing. Um, so something like that was what really drew me into this knife. So I love the milling on that. It extends into the um, a filler tab for the pot clip that is lefty and righty carry. Uh, the pot clip I really, really love. It is a milled clip, but it goes pretty deep into the knife and I just love the way it looks aesthetically, functions. Um, one of my favorite clips I've seen in a while, I think. Obviously you have a front flipper, a minimal back flipper here. You have a hole for deployment. You guys can see this is Gonna be some sort of harpoony style blade with lots of jimping up top there. Um, relatively thin knife. So there is the um, obviously says dog or uh, excuse me dogfish. That is the maker's mark, which I'll tell you the maker in a second. Kaiser 154cm obviously has a DLC or PVD coated um, here on the blade. Comes down to a pretty thin edge. You also get a crown spine, which is really nice too. You guys know I love a crown spine. Um, as for internal milling, there are five little circles on the button lock side and three bigger pockets on the show scale side. Obviously it does have a button lock, if I did not already mention that. Um, now some stats for the knife. Overall length is 7.44 inches, blade length of 3.15 inches. So coming in in that you know, three to three and a quarter inch sweet spot that I really like. Blade thickness is 0 0.12 inches, obviously 154 cm. Uh, this is considered a drop point, even though it kind of has this poon up here. Um, we'll call it a, a poon point. Um, handle length of 4.29 inches. Um, it's a, considered a 3D puck clip, but again, I, I think it's fantastic. Weighs at, comes in at a weight of 3.39 ounces and it is designed by Caleb Waldman, um, which I'm not super familiar with. I don't know if he has any other, uh, you know, designs in the market or if this is his first design, but if this is his first design, I think he killed it. Um, very clean, very min minimalistic. Uh, now for the, you know, out of five, I I'm gonna give it a five, you know, for the price point that it's coming in at. I will say it's under $100 technically. Um, we'll get to that later, but for 154 cm, Really beautifully milled titanium, or excuse me, aluminum on both sides. A 3D milled clip. Five different ways of deploying the knife. Uh, I have to give it a five. There's there's no complaints at all. Kaiser kills it again with the materials, you know, with the build quality, all that. Uh, now for aesthetic, I think this looks really good. Um, that was another thing. Obviously, the aesthetic of the scales really drew me in. But I think it's a very clean looking knife. Obviously, a dogfish is either some sort of fish or it's a, a type of shark, I'm uh, thinking, uh, but it's some sea creature. 
And I think that really kind of follows, you know, I, I definitely get some sea creature vibes from this, from the harpoon, from the way the knife just kind of sways back. Um, obviously nice big slot hole for deployment, choil indent right here. Um, from an aesthetics, I, I think this looks really good. I don't, I'm not going to go out and say that it's my favorite looking knife ever, but I think it's very justifiably a 4.5 for me. Um, you know, it's not, it, it's aesthetically appealing, aesthetically pleasing to look at. Um, and those scales really just drive it home. So yeah, really don't have any more justification that why it's on a five, I guess. It's just, it's not my favorite, but it's very, very good. Um, so next up is action. So like I stated, there are five different ways of deploying this knife. You have the back flipper, you have the front flipper, you have a middle finger flick, a thumb flick, a thumb slow roll, and the button. So I guess there's technically six ways. So you can back flip it, you can front flip it, you can middle finger flick it, you can thumb flick it, you can slow roll it, and you can use the button to open the knife. So I think fidgetability is obviously a huge you know, factor when it comes to this knife and a huge selling point of what's going to draw people in. Uh, and, and I think it works very, very well. Now the detent is not the best that I've handled from a button lock. The, you know, it's definitely, I feel like there could be a stronger spring in there or something that would really spice this up a little bit because I do feel like the the detent can be a little bit mushy and that's my, my one little nitpick on the knife. But, you know, as long as you pull the knife out and you flip it well, flip it well, Flick it well, flick it, oh, see, flick it, eh, flick it well. It is a little bit tough because the way the um, sculpt of the handle is, but there we go. See, I do have trouble with the thumb flick, um, just, and that's just because you don't have a whole lot of space to put in there. Um, slow roll, and then obviously the button. So, you know, the detent could be a little bit better, and that's my only, that's my only kind of nitpick, but... I really enjoyed it. You know, it's the button is also, you do have to kind of disengage the button the whole way in to get it to like smoothly drop down. It is a little bit of a learning curve, but again, this is a pass around knife, so it's not mine personally. Um, you know, you guys can see that if you stop the, the blade uh, or stop the button, the blade stops. But, you know, I do think it's really good. Thumb flick, or uh, excuse me, middle finger flick on the back. It can also be a little bit of a learning curve too because you just don't have a whole lot of space back there. You kind of have to dig your nail in when it flies out. But the front flipper works really well. You have a lot of jumping that extends the whole way up over the edge. Same with the back flipper. So you have plenty of jumping there for both of those. Um, I'm going to go 4.5 again. I think it's it's very good, but you know, just having a little bit stronger of a detent would be, would be better, I think. And um, yeah, it's really the only, I guess, nitpick I have with the action department. Um, next up is acoustics. Definitely not bad, but I feel like the aluminum kind of dulls it a little bit. Um, you do get a nice kind of thwack. I think the, the front flip is definitely the best one because you can open it with some force. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 3.5. Uh, I think it's definitely okay, but I've heard much better. Um, it's on the, the better side of okay, but definitely heard much better. Uh, so next up is Ergos. The Ergos get a five out of five for me right away. Uh, it's very comfortable. Uh, you know, you have this very very generous. Don't want to talk this here right now. Uh, you have this very generous forward finger choil that is partially you know scale, partially blade. You have this indent here. It's pretty you know simple design i want to say i mean from the poon back it's pretty much a straight line you do have a little bit of a curvature uh, and then here's straight um, so choked back my thumb lands right there on the poon plenty of jimping gives you a nice little ramp to uh you know latch onto but i can get all four fingers in the knife choked back uh, my pinky is kind of squished on a little bit but it's still very comfortable and that 3d clip is you know sitting pretty flush to the scale and it's you know it's uh, contoured nice enough so it's really not causing a hot spot at all but this is very comfortable but the true you know uh star of the ergo department is which i use that line a lot but i feel like it's true you know when you have choils those are the real true stars of the ergo department um and this is you know right similar in line so choked up uh, middle finger goes right here in this groove fits nicely pinky and ring finger sit here pointer finger wraps around and your thumb lands right in that choil as well 
Uh, so it's very, very comfortable. That aluminum with that milling really is, it's, it's not an aggressive milling. It still has a nice smooth texture to it, but it does just enough for, you know, enough grip to be, you know, enough texture to be applied to your grip that really just lost your hand in there between that and the, um, between that, the choil and the poon with all the jimping up there, really, really comfortable in hand uh, in all, you know, different slicing tasks. But just super comfortable. Uh, pinch grip works really well with this knife too, but you just have to be careful with all button locks. You don't want to like pinch too much and then, you know, no, actually that's not too bad. You can feel the blade shaking a little bit, but like I said earlier, you really have to push this button the whole way in uh, to disengage it. So you can probably get away with using a pinch grip with this, but I haven't really used it a ton. I just did some test cuts with it. Um, but yeah, Argos are five out of five. Really, really comfortable knife. And uh, that milling just really, really does it for me. Uh, and the combination of everything is just super duper comfortable. And it's lightweight too. Again, it's like three point, what do they say on here? 3.39 ounces. And it honestly feels a little bit lighter than that. So uh, yeah, five out of five for the Ergos. Uh, next up is Carrie, and I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 was there as well because I really, again, have no complaints about it. It's comfortable. Uh, it's, it's a decent size, you know, medium-sized knife, but it's all nicely, you know, rounded right here. You do this back flipper that's way down at the bottom of the knife. So you do have a small risk of when you go down to grab change, coins, it's the same thing, change, chapstick, medicine, things of that nature. You do have a very small risk of reaching down and possibly pulling the knife up out of your pocket, but... You know, the jimping is, it's rounded the whole way around, but it's not overly aggressive. So you really don't have any issues with that. I never did. Um, I rarely ever do with knives. I just like to, you know, point that out to you guys as a possibility. Uh, but lefty or righty deep carry, well, not not deep carry, but deep enough. I mean, you have about that much sticking about your pocket where the screw goes in. Um, but the clip has nice retention. It looks really good. It, it, it looks almost like a pen clip, kind of. Um, I really, really like that. So uh, five out of five, no complaints at all. Um, it, it does just enough, it sits in your pocket, nice, slim profile. Uh, I've really enjoyed the carry, and it is basically a dream to carry. So um, that leads me to my final category of price point slash value and what I recommend this knife. So price point on the Dogfish, on White Mountain Knives, which is currently out of stock. So I might try to find another company or another website that has it in stock for you guys. But I tend to like to use White Mountain for, you know, codes. So if you guys want to wait for it to come back in stock, um, but it comes in at $99. So just under a hundred dollars. And you know, if you use someone's code on a website like that, that accepts codes, you can get it down towards 90. And I think that's a great price. You know, you're getting really nice sculpted, um, milled aluminum scales, a button lock, six different ways of deploying the knife, 154 CM, a beautiful, um, poon, what what I call it? a drop point, a, a poon point, um, beautiful milled clip. Great design overall. Uh, I really, you know, hats off to Chris for designing such a, just a, a nice, sleek EDC knife that's great fidgetability or has great fidgetability. Um, but 154 CM is a good blade seal. I think it's it's great anything under $100. Um, and I think even up to $150, you can find really good values on knives with 154 CM. So um, I can absolutely recommend it. I think, you know, it's a five out of five uh, for the price and value. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. Sometimes I get confused with um, how how many I write down, but um, again, we're slowly learning. We're still in January, so I've only been doing this review system for a month, but I think it's been working pretty well. Um, you know, so yeah, let me add these up real quick, and then I'll get back to you guys with a a better number. It also puts my my basic math skills to the test. That is for sure. All right, so I have the dogfish coming in. Again, this is my scale um, of, you know, reviews at a 32.5, which lands it in the fantastic category. So it's just coming in. That category is 32.5 to 35. Um, yeah, I think it's it's very well suited for that. Uh, the only thing I could see was maybe a little bit better of a detent uh, and a little bit, you know, a little bit better actuation on the button. But all in all, it's a fantastic knife. Kaiser did a really good job. Um, Chris had a great design, and uh, yeah, I just really love those scales. So 
Uh, drop a comment down below. Have you guys picked up the dogfish? Are you, you know, considering picking one up? I'd uh, love to hear you guys have to say, but I'm going to wrap it all up now. So this was my full review on the Kaiser Knives Dogfish. A uh, huge shout out to Lefty EDC for always putting in bangers for us. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys again so much for watching. I greatly appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your morning, evening, day, night, whenever you're watching this. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.